Of course, passing anything, anything at all, of kidney stone, anything, <laughs> would get the news off of the growing Russia scandal. And remember, former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort, remember that guy? Well, we just found out that Paul Manafort currently has three U.S. passports, and he used a phone and an email account registered under a fake name. Hello, Paul Manafort? No, my name is Good Guy McInnocent Fella. <laughs> I'm bad at this. <laughs> they haven't released what his fake name is, but apparently Manafort's internet password was Bond007. <laughs> oh. His catchphrase? Bond. Can someone please post Bond? I don't want to go to jail. Quality. He doesn't really strike me as a 007. He looks more like a Bond villain. <laughs> Paul Manafort in from Russia with cash. <laughs> His, <laughs> I always forget the sting. His character's name, Putin Galore. <laughs> oh, oh, according, oh. Putin, <laughs> according. <laughs> To Mueller's indictment, Manafort used hidden offshore cash to buy property, including a condominium in New York's Soho neighborhood. Soho? Come on. Everybody knows all the cool Munder laundering has moved out to Brooklyn. <laughs> and it gets even shadier, because according to the indictment, Manafort committed fraud by claiming his daughter lived at the apartment while he was actually charging thousands of dollars a week on Airbnb. He's a political fixer for billionaire strongmen, but he still needs to make a buck on the side? <laughs> That's like finding out O.J. was driving his Bronco for Uber. Oh, but apparently... Oh. Don't get in. <laughs> don't get in now. Don't get in. You don't want to be in there. Good joke. You might not get in. I'm running commentary on the jokes now. Apparently, the White House is spooked by Mueller's indictments. For the first time, the prospect of impeachment is being considered as a realistic outcome and not just a liberal fever dream. Oh, come on. That's not a liberal fever dream. A liberal fever dream is listening to NPR while having a three-way with an endangered rhino and Bernie Sanders on a pile of quinoa while McSweeney's publishes your list of 101 reasons why Whole Foods is like a Jonathan Franzen novel. <laughs> <laughs> These, that's a fever dream. Things. <laughs> long sentence is what that oh was. Oh, my. It's a very yeah. long sentence. Things are getting so bad that former White House advisor and what your doctor has you look at if your erection lasts longer than four hours, Steve Bannon, oh, is, is oh, urging. Wow. He is urging the president to defund Mueller's investigation. Oh, come on. Mueller does not need your money. Trump's so unpopular, Mueller could fund his investigation with an open guitar case. <laughs> but the president... Boy, get your buskin in, baby. Hang down your head, Steve Bannon. But the president has not taken Bannon's advice. Instead, Trump is listening to friends like Newsmax exec Christopher Ruddy, who said of Bannon... I like Steve, but his advice is not always the most helpful. Whatever Steve says, the president should do the opposite. <laughs> okay, so be a black supremacist? Oh, my. Oh. But Trump's not worried. He's not. He's not yeah. sweating this one. That's why yesterday, Trump called a New York Times reporter to project an air of calm over the charges. <laughs> Hello? Failing New York Times, I just wanted you to know that I am not at all worried about the thing I called you up to tell you that I'm not even thinking about. <laughs> I don't know why you called me to talk about it. Adding, and this is true, I'm not under investigation, as you know. Yeah, they're just rounding up all your friends and family and asking them questions about you. Maybe Robert Mueller's planning you a surprise party. <laughs> they're gonna give you an orange jumpsuit and a new pair of bracelets. When asked about his greatest accomplishments uh, by the Times, Trump said, I just got fantastic poll numbers. <laughs> really? <laughs> Mr. President, I know you love golf, but in this game, the low number doesn't win. 
In fact, according to a new poll by the American Psychological Association, 59% of Americans said that this is the lowest point in U.S. history they can remember. Of course, that could be for many reasons, okay? Uh, Donald Trump... <laughs> Keep in mind, this survey included people who lived during World War II, the Vietnam War, the Cuban Missile Crisis, and the September 11th terror attacks, and each group all said, now is the worst time. <laughs> Listen, I know people are bummed out, but I want to give our nation hope, because I firmly believe that in many ways, this is the best time in our nation's history. What ways? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, America is better now than it's ever been before. Consider this. There are more Fast and Furious movies than at any point in our history. Rock, Tyrese, patch things up. We have more Oreo flavors than anyone ever wanted. And if you traveled back in time and showed Ulysses S. Grant your smartphone, he would be amazed at how much porn you have on there. Also, thanks to that same technology, you can be anywhere on this planet and immediately look up what the E stands for in Chuck E. Cheese. It stands for entertainment. His actual full name is Charles Entertainment Cheese. That... That is insane. So chin up, America. Things are gonna be okay. And I am gonna keep saying that until I believe it. We got a great show for you tonight. Whoopi Goldberg is here.